Hi, I'm Warden. Glad you're here, Sheriff. Came as soon as I heard your siren. Did you find your man? No, we've searched everywhere. Who was it? John Channing. Oh, I've heard of him. He's a killer. He's bad and he's smart. Yeah, but I'll bet I know where he's heading, back to his old home at Stonecliff. That'll be my guess, too. Any idea how he got away? The bars on his room window were sawed, and he must have climbed down. But there wasn't any rope, so how'd he get over the wall? Well, he could have doubled the rope and pulled the end free. Wonder if he had outside help. No one with any brains would help free a killer like him. I guess not, except another killer. Well, I'm going to follow my hunch. Ten to one, he'd be waiting for us at the Channing house. How'd he get out there ahead of us? Hitchhike. Well, who'd be dumb enough to give a nut like that a ride? Some other nut. I hope whoever picks him up gets what's coming to him. Well, I'd like to bet Doe he's at the Channing house right now. He'd be crazy to go there. That'd be the first place anybody would look for him. Well, if he's not crazy, how come he's been in the asylum for ten years? Oh, uh, I mean, he'd know he'd look for him there the first thing. Oh, sure. You would know exactly how a lunatic's mind works. Sheriff Selby, this is the Channing house? Yes, it has been for many years. I want to see Miss Channing. Miss Channing has retired. I'll take your message. I'm sorry, but this is official business. I want to see her at once. Very well, sir. I'll tell her. Turn on the lights, Eustace. Miss Lorinda's coming down. Well, I never known Miss Lorinda to come down this time of night. Unfortunately, these officers have no regard for Miss Lorinda's comfort. Excuse me, gentlemen, I'll brighten up right away. I didn't know you was low. Fix you all some more sandwiches? Some more sandwiches? Yes. You eat them so fast, I thought maybe you was putting your stall. I can fix Mr. Renner's night lunch again after y'all goes. Hey, maybe we ought to take him back to the asylum, too. Did I hear you mention an asylum, Sheriff? Why, yes, ma'am, you did. Your brother escaped from there just a couple of hours ago. John? Yes, ma'am. That's why we came to warn you. You think he came here? Well, it would be the natural thing to do. This was his home once. Yes, that's true. But I'm not afraid of John. Well, you should be. He's a killer. As shrewd and crafty as anyone they've ever had there, they said. Please, it isn't necessary for you to tell me all that. No, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, ma'am, but you must be careful, even if you are his sister. I appreciate your warning, of course. But what is it you want to do now? Wait here and watch? No, ma'am, we're not sure he's coming here, so we'll have to keep hunting and warn other houses around. Yes, I suppose that is best. You'll let us know if he shows up. Should he come here, you'll know of it. I promise. Thank you, ma'am. Judson, show the gentleman out. Mr. Sheriff, here's your sandwiches. Eustace, what is this about sandwiches? Well, I had some sandwiches on this plate, and I had the plate, and I put it right over here on the table, and I went to turn the light on, and when I looked around, they was gone. They ate them. They ate them just like that. Oh, you probably just forgot to put them on the tray. Maybe I did, maybe I did. Well, anyway, I shan't want anything more tonight. Yes. Oh, uh, Judson, we were talking about your vacation a few days ago. You may take it. 
It's starting tomorrow. Tomorrow, miss? And you may tell all the other servants, I've arranged to have a man named Martin replace you while you're gone. Good night. Good night. I expected you earlier. My drive was slow. Stop too often to look for me. <laughs> so that's how you came here, in the arms of the law. In the rumble of the law's majesty, you might say. That's how I came. But they'll never take me back. Of course not. You'll never have to go back there at all. That's why I sent you those presents. Quite welcome they were, too. <laughs> I kept the rope and tied up one of the guards in the grounds. Not really. Oh, but I did and pulled him high up in the branches of a tree where they won't find him for days. That must have been fun, to watch him wriggle about in the treetop. Oh, it was fun, till he stopped. Perhaps I shouldn't have tied the rope around his neck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying my sandwiches. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know they were yours. Oh, don't mention it. I knew you'd arrived all right the moment my houseboy said they disappeared. <laughs> Cigarette? <laughs> I do look a bit tired, though. That's how I usually look. They only shave us once a week. Hmm. They could at least trust you with an electric razor. Then you always did prefer edge tools, I remember. I do still. I like sharp edges. There's nothing more fascinating than a scalpel. Cut so quickly, so silently, so deeply. It reminds me. I'm going to be a doctor, a surgeon. But we already have one doctor in the family now. Our precious nephew, Lawrence. Don't remember him. But then I haven't seen any of the younger generation for a long time, of course. Hmm, almost ten years. It must have been quite boring for you up there. There were certain compensations. <laughs> no end of amusing people. But even they got tiresome. And the worst of it, oh, you'll never guess. What? I had to act crazy so they put me in a padded cell where I could get a little peace. I can't imagine you acting crazy. You were always so dignified. But you can be your own real self now. First, get shaved. There's a razor in there. Grandfather's. Splendid. He always kept a nidge on. <laughs> By the way, our nephew Walter has taken his grandfather's place. He only stays sober long enough to borrow money from me to get tight on again. I could make him quit drinking. And our other nephew, Horace. Too smart to live outside of jail. Pity I can't meet all those charming people. Oh, but you can. That's why I brought you here. You mean you're going to let them see me? Send me back there? No, you don't understand. I hate them all. I know they'd like to see me dead just to get my money. So I'm planning to test them with your help. It'll be more fun than you've ever had before. They'll never dream who you are. Who am I supposed to be? Old Judson is going away, and you're the new butler. 
Hi, Butler. They're all coming here as house guests, and then, well, I've already intimated that I may leave all my money to my secretary, Mary. Do they believe that? <laughs> I've built it up beautifully, sent her on a trip east, given her all the money she wanted for her clothes and everything. Oh, but you've such a wonderful sense of humor, Lorinda. They still might think it a joke. Then I'll fool them. I'll really leave Mary my money. Why don't you leave me the money? Don't worry. I won't forget you. You did for 10 years. Oh, but they will hate that girl, won't they? Maybe even try to kill her. Oh, quite possible. But nothing must really happen to her. You and I'll be watching them all the time. Yes, yes, I noticed that all our little secret hiding places and passageways were just as I'd left them. Yes, as I said, we'll be watching them and play with them like... Like I did with old Lady Grimes. Yes, only this time you mustn't get caught. We'll have to do things more cleverly. Yes, more cleverly. But I wouldn't have been caught then if I hadn't got excited. It was that... That's what did it. The song that night, the right leg, it drove me wild. It always does. I don't know what I'm doing. Get back in there, John Channing, and shave yourself. Judson. I'm Martin, sir. Judson's on vacation. Well, so are we. Invited down for the weekend by Miss Channing. I wouldn't know about that, sir. Miss Channing has driven to the depot to meet Miss Winfield. Miss Winfield? Miss Winfield is Miss Channing's secretary. She's just returning from a trip east. Yes, we know that. A six months trip on my aunt's money. Miss Channing, your aunt. I didn't know you were a Channing, sir. Yes, I'm Horace Channing. And I'm Mrs. Channing, so let's go in. Hattie, take these bags into the house. We'll arrange their disposition later on. The impudence of the man. Dispose of our bags, as if he felt we were imposters. Probably Aunt Lorinda's instructions were to insult us. I wonder why she asked us down here anyhow. Walter and Rita. Uh oh, they've got a new car. They must have hit Auntie again. Dear Aunt Lorinda never gives us anything. I'm Martin, sir, the new butler. You, I presume, are Mr. and Mrs. Walter Channing. That's right, just down to spend the weekend with the old lady. Yes, sir. Uh, go right in. You'll find scotch and soda in the library, sir. Fine, now that's the way I like to be welcomed. Look, in the window, Horace and Estelle. Oh, so they sneak down here ahead of us. I suppose they've already put the bite on Aunt Lorinda for plenty. Mr. Horace has just arrived, sir. Miss Channing will be home shortly. Oh, thank you, Martin. Well, that's a relief. At least they haven't had a chance to get to her yet. Did you get the way that butler fawned all over them? I bet he had instructions about that, too. Why, Rita, what a pleasant surprise. How are you, Horace? Well, Walter, I didn't know the old bus could make it way out here. Why don't you take another peek? That little job was the last one sold before car sales were frozen. Did Aunt Lorinda buy that for you, too? Oh, no. I won this at bank night. And what's it to you if she did? Being sarcastic isn't going to help matters any. We have a common enemy to face. What do you mean, a common enemy? Estelle means Mary Winfield. Aunt Lorinda's gone down to the station to meet her. Oh, so that's why we were invited. I suppose we're going to be told formally that she's going to get all of Lorinda's dough. Well, she won't get away with it. We'll get a lawyer and have Aunt Lorinda declared incompetent. Won't we, Horace? No, we can't do that now. For once, I agree with Walter. We mustn't resort to the law until we have to. Oh, it's so seldom my dear brother agrees with me. I think that calls for a little drink. I thought it was about time. Pardon me, please. Your rooms have been assigned if you care to get settled now. Well, I guess we might as well before Miss Winfield arrives and takes over. We'll have to take her over somehow. Or we'll all be paupers for the rest of our lives. Oh, Horace. Excuse, please. But how many are you cooked in there for? There will be seven. Miss Winfield and Mr. Thorne, Miss Channing's attorney, are yet to come. 
Martin. Yes, sir. Did you say Miss Channing's attorney was coming to dinner? Yes, Mr. Peter Thorne. Thank you. There is something up, Walter. Aunt Lorinda's attorney's coming. I get what you mean, Horace, but let's not forget where there's a will, there's a way. Yes, it's just up to us to find that way. Good to see you again, my dear. I'll never let you be away from me so long again. I'm happy to be back, too, to be with you. <laughs> Not to mention Peter Thorne, of course. Oh, I admit I was glad to see him. He met me at the landing field, you know. He said he was coming up here over the weekend on business. I know. Business and pleasure, both. Only he'll be going away again pretty soon, for no one knows how long. Yes, he told me he was going to enlist and not wait to be called. That's why I suggest you don't waste any time. Be happy while you can. But I don't want to be a burden to him. You see, he was just getting started in practice. Yes, and hasn't much money. Well, don't worry about that. I've arranged things so you never have to want for anything. You've been named my principal heir. Oh, Miss Lorinda, you can't do that. I've done it. After all, my dear, your father and I were once great friends. Oh, I know, but all oh, your nephews. And their precious wives and whatnots, too. Well, they'll all get exactly what they deserve. No more, no less. Miss Lorinda, I Now, still... not another word, and never call me Miss Lorinda again. I'm certainly more of an aunt to you than I'll ever be to any of those feather-brained idiots that are in my home right now, just waiting to see what they can wheedle out of me. Your home, where we is right now? Mary, this is Martin. How do you do? Well, don't stand gapping all day. Have her bags brought in. Very good, ma'am. Boy, the bags. Yes. What did you hurry? Found oh, Dr. Channing to come at once. What happened? That flower pot has nearly struck her. by inches. If it struck her, it could have killed her. It would have killed Mary Winfield, too, if it had struck her. Why not admit it? That's what we all want, isn't it? I'll have to be right over. Yes, and I suppose he'll bring his special nurse with him. Of course he'll bring Miss Stevens, as she'd say him for breach of promise. Well, that'll just about complete our family gathering. And I have a hunch it'll be a pretty interesting weekend. Look like there's something else in that pot besides just flowers. to report there's nothing serious, Aunt Lorinda. It was just the shock of your narrow escape that upset you, I'd say. I'd say it was Mary who escaped. Someone tried to kill her. Oh, Aunt Lorinda, I can't believe that. You don't know the mad Channings like I do. Anyway, there are not very many people in this world who wouldn't break a flower pot for a chance at a fortune. You don't mean that. Of course not. You surely wouldn't accuse either Walter or Horace. Of even hesitating at murder. No, I wouldn't. Not where there's money involved. That's exactly why I feel Mary is more deserving of the Channing fortune than they. Well, you couldn't have chosen a more charming heiress, no one that I'd be more happy to welcome into our family. Excuse me, Doctor. I thought perhaps Miss Channing would like some tea. some fruit, Miss Lorinda, and I hope it find you feeling much better. Thank you, Eustace. You know, I don't like that pigeon, and he don't like me neither. Oh, maybe he's just hungry. Here, Mr. Poe. 
My dear, I'm almost sorry you came home. I want you to be careful every moment you're in this house. Oh, I still think you're just nervous. It was only an accident. I hope so. Wouldn't you like to go out and pick some flowers for me while I talk to Lawrence? Miss Arena? Look like Mr. Poe's got the measures. Uh-oh. There you go. Dead. Dead? What killed him? That smells like bitter almond, one of the carbolins. You mean it was poison? Uh-oh, I brought this stuff up here myself. That's just what I was going to say. You brought that stuff up here. Who gave it to you? For whom was it intended? Lawrence, please, I'll handle this. I don't think you had anything to do with this, Eustace. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am. I didn't have nothing to do with it, except to tote it up here. It was in the kitchen all fixed for me to fetch. You may go now, Eustace, but don't say a word about this to anyone. Send Mallow to me at once. Yes, Mallow. He could have did that, too. That man ain't to be trusted. I could eat some of that food coming upstairs myself. You just can't trust them Japs. Do you still think that falling flower pot was an accident? I don't know what to think now. Do as I said. Be on your guard every moment. Now go downstairs and see if any of my dear guests are surprised to see you alive. I'm sorry, Lorenda. I never dreamed the situation was really like this. You need a bodyguard. Oh, that's not the answer. I want permanent security. I want to trap whoever's trying to murder that girl and me. Well, that's a job for the police. Oh, it's my job if I want to escape the notoriety that would come from filling out the complaint. I want those weedy vultures downstairs to think I'm dead. Then watch them fight over my money like dogs over a bone. How in the world do you ever expect to make them believe that? There are certain drugs that will induce suspended animation, aren't there? Well, I know of one at least, but there's no telling how the drug would react on your system. I'll have to take that risk. What's the antidote? An intravenous injection of sugar in the case of the drug I have in mind. But no reputable doctor would lend himself to such a scheme anyhow. Wouldn't you for $10,000? I'm sure you've done far worse for less. But it's dangerous. You may not come out of it. If I die, you gain by it. I've provided for you handsomely in my will. Suppose I do help you. Just how far do you want to go? The limit. A private funeral, of course, and my body laid away in the family crypt. Well, that's impossible. For that, I'd have to issue a death certificate, or there'd be an autopsy. And there's also a law on embalming. <laughs> you could pay an undertaker for special service. I imagine you've done things like that before. You win, Lorinda. I'll risk it. <laughs> I knew you would. After all, I'm gambling my life. You're gambling nothing. If I live, you get $10,000, and a lot more if I die. Oh, excuse me. That's all right. I was just going. I only wanted to say that Marlowe's bringing your tea. Thank you. What was that about $10,000? I'll tell you later. Right now, I've got to go into town for something very important. Would you like a cup of tea, Marlo? No. No, thank you. Perhaps you'd like some fruit. Oh, Marlo does not like fruit. Not the kind that Mr. Poe ate, you mean. Mr. Poe? Can't you see what happened to him? Oh, I'm so sorry the poor bird died. Didn't you expect someone to die? Oh, no. Please do not talk so. You knew those cherries were poisoned because someone in this very house hired you to poison them. No, no, Marlo know nothing about poison. Nobody hired Marlo to do anything. Was it Mr. Walter or Mr. Horace? No, Maro, no nothing. Nobody hire Maro, I say. I could have you arrested for attempted murder, but I'd much rather find out who hired you. So I'll pay you $1,000 for his name. $1,000? No one will ever know who you told me. I do not know the gentleman by name. I find out later, then come back. Never mind. Take out the tea. Take the tea.
silly way to kill a bird, isn't it? I mean, to do a thing like that so quickly. No time to appreciate its reactions at all. It wasn't done for amusement, I assure you. Oh, I know that, of course. But it will be fun watching Marlowe. He has it. Went for it like a child in his simple, wholesome way. Oh, I wouldn't say he was any too wholesome. No. Not like Mary Winfield. Mary? Yes. Why didn't you tell me about her? What is there to tell? That she's so lovely, so delicate, so dainty. Why she's as helpless as... as that bird. John! What are you talking about? Nothing. Only she reminds me of someone. Someone I used to know very well. Mary is Jack Winfield's daughter. Of course, I can see the resemblance now. You used to be quite fond of Jack yourself. Yes. We were engaged once. And we were just a couple of crazy kids. Jack once said I was crazy. Just before he went away. Ten years later, you sold him a lot of worthless stock. I thought he was crazy to have bought it. But I don't think Mary's crazy. She has none of the mad Channing blood in her. But she's very, very interesting. She fascinates me. John, you mustn't say that. Nothing must happen to her. Besides, there are all the others to be taken care of. Yes, you're right. There's lots to be done. And we're going to have lots of fun too, Lorinda. Lots and lots of fun. <laughs> Pardon me, miss. But I believe Miss Lorinda suggested you cut us some flowers. Yes. Sit here. I'll get you the shears and gloves. I won't be a moment. Thank you. I never was so glad to see anyone in my life. What's the matter, honey? You look frightened. I am frightened. Terrible things have been happening. Someone's trying to kill Aunt Lorinda. They tried to poison her, and then just as we were coming in the now, door... wait a minute. Take it easy. One thing at a time. Suppose you settle down and tell me all about it. All right, I will, but let's get out of this house. All right, honey. We'll take a walk. Well, we thought of that poison is certainly brilliant. Don't look at me. I'm not that bad. No, I beg your pardon, Horace. I suppose poison is more like a lady's method, like dropping flower pots on women's heads. I didn't do that. Neither did I. And if you accuse me once more, you may find a little something in one of your highballs. But, honey, it's unbelievable. It doesn't seem possible that any sane person would make two such crude attempts, either. <laughs> All I can say is I was there. Well, I guess some people would do almost anything for money. But I don't want it. The nephew can have it. I think that's for Miss Lorenda to say. The best thing for you to do is to leave at once. Oh, but I can't leave her at a time like this. For some reason, she wants to keep those people here, too. Well, I'll stay on over the weekend. Oh, well, then on Monday when they go, I know I'll be all right. I'm sure you will. Because from Monday on, you're going to be with me. Oh, darling. I mean it. Why waste time? Excuse me, please. I only come to say Ms. Lorena would like to see Mr. Thorne, when and if it's convenient. Well, it's about very convenient right now. But I'll be right along. It's just about some papers, honey. It won't take me very long. And don't you worry. You'll be safe here with Eustace. All right, darling. Now I've got to be this pool, pies, and pigeons. you. 
The ghost! I just saw a ghost rest for you out of dead folks' private room. I don't see anything reaching. I reckon you ain't got supernatural eyes like me, but I saw plenty. The chef place is full of ghosts. There's a ghost that eat my sandwich, and I know it was a ghost that wretched for you. That's a lot of nonsense. Go on, open the door, and I'll prove it to you. Oh, no, not me. Go on, open the door. Go on. Show me your ghostly. You see, it's just your imagination. No man may not be no ghost here now, but I... Forget about it. Come on, shut the door. Sent you. Oh, you keep them, Peter. And this one, too. It contains certain instructions to be followed immediately if something serious should happen to me. If something serious should happen to you? That's right. But don't worry. Just go out and join Mary. Look after her for me. I don't want anything to happen to her. Run along, my good boy, will you? Oh, good evening, Doctor. Well, did you get everything? Everything. Good. And I've made all the other necessary arrangements, too, even with the Undertaker. Then the only thing left to decide is when and where I'll be revived. It won't be safe to wait too long, you know. The antidote must be administered within a reasonable length of time to be effective. You could give it just after the services. Just before the casket's closed. It won't be safe to wait much longer, I'm sure. Oh, when I awaken, I'll be in the tomb of my ancestors. Yes. You'll be in the vault by the time you recover. Perfect. You know, it gives me a thrill. To know I'm going to die tonight. Sorry to be late, but Aunt Lorinda detained me. How is she? Will the poison really get her? Poison? How'd you know about that? Oh, well, Miss Winfield was kind enough to tell us. So she didn't explain just how and by whom it was given. If you're insinuating that Miss Winfield had anything to do with that, you'll apologize right now. Oh, I was only thinking who'd gain most by Lorinda's death. It's one of her attorneys. She might have learned through you. I don't even know the details of Miss Channing's will myself. I didn't draw it up. But you do have a copy of it now. I happen to know. Oh, please, let's not talk about it. Money doesn't mean anything compared to Miss Lorinda's life. <coughs> Dr. Channing! Dying. I think I'd better take me a little vacation. of you was to blame. I'm going to find out who poisoned her and see that they're punished. I'm going to tell the police. Why don't you do that little thing? Why don't you keep quiet? You don't know what you're talking about, Miss Winfield. Poison had nothing to do with Lorinda's death. The only poison I know of is in the fruit that killed the raven. Lorinda never touched that, as you saw. She died of a heart ailment from which she's been suffering for years. I know that. And I'll swear to it when I sign the death certificate. I'm glad to hear you say that, Doctor. I'm sorry I was so hasty. Look, honey, you're tired. Why don't you go in and lie down a while? Get some rest. Do you? Just as you should be. Come in here, ma'am. You mustn't stay here another minute. Oh, 
you're just nervous over Miss Lorinda's death. Here, sit down. <laughs> no, it's not only that, ma'am. But there's so much hate and evil in this house already. And now with Miss Lorinda dead and them saying you're to get the money, I'm afraid for you, ma'am. I'm afraid. Oh, you've been listening to Eustace and his ghost stories. Here, drink. Matthews. Come over as soon as you can. Dr. Channing, Patty's fainted. I'll have a look at her. What happened to your head? Boy, oh, yeah, I just bumped it on the door looking through a keyhole, I suppose. Why, it's dark. Patty's gone. I can't understand it. She was lying right here when I left, in a dead faint. Well, maybe Walter can explain. He had his eye on something. I don't know where Patty is. Pardon me, sir. I can explain about Hattie. She was quite done in, so I gave her permission to go home to her mother's for a few days. She could at least have waited for Aunt Lorinda's services. Well, you never can tell about service. She's all right now, anyhow. Oh, yes, sir. Hattie's quite all right now, I'm sure. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Step in the library, I have something to tell you. Why not? The spirits in there are just as good as those here. Better go get a cup of coffee, Matthews. We won't be ready for some little time yet. Where is it? Call me out of the library within 10 minutes at the latest. Please understand that I'm merely carrying out Miss Channing's orders. The envelope she left me contained definite instructions. No, you don't have to alibi for her. We all know the old dame was a crackpot. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Why don't you show a little shame? Easing in here and jipping us out of a fortune. Be quiet, Walter. No one knows what's to be done with Lorinda's fortune yet. That's right. But unless I miss my guess, this record would tell us everything. She made it herself. I, Lorinda Louise Channing, on this sixth day of April, being of sound mind and memory, do hereby give, devise, and bequeath to my devoted secretary, Mary Winfield, one half of all my property both real and personal, to my nephew, Dr. Lawrence Channing, for special services rendered in my lifetime, one-fourth of all my property, to Walter Channing and Horace Channing, one dollar each, to my faithful servant, Eustace, my photograph, framed. I pause here, hoping only to be able to hear from wherever I may be, Walter's and Horace's comments on my will. Well, I hope she knows what I'm thinking, the old buzzard. Well, that only accounts for three-quarters of the estate, anyhow. She probably figured a lawyer would get the balance. 
You should know, dearie, after three trips to Reno. As to the balance of my estate, I have converted that into cash and bonds and hidden it within this house. And I give it in its entirety to whichever one of you beloved ones shall find it. Now to resume. You will find a clue to the treasure's location in an envelope in my casket. So, may the best hunter win. <laughs> Pardon my laughter, but knowing how selfish and unprincipled you all are, it amuses me immensely to think how you, the last of the mad Channings, are going to lie and cheat and fight each other, even to the point of murder. Goodbye, my dears. I gave a sealed envelope containing the clue to the undertaker. I also have a copy of the legal will in case any of you would like to see it. Not I, thanks. Our Aunt Lorinda has a delicious sense of humor. She predicted murder. Well, here's one way we can outsmart her. Now, listen, we'll all work together from now on and share what we find equally. For once in your life, you've said something sensible. Come in. Mr. Matthews would like to see Dr. Channing. I'll be right there. Wait a minute, where are you going? You heard it. It's probably about some details of the funeral arrangements. Mr. Matthews is the undertaker. Don't go south with that treasure clue. There's no more of it prepared. You've killed her. Good riddance. Come on, let's get out of here. What are you stalling about? Trying to put something over? No, I'm not. There's the key to your treasure hunt. Why, this is just a blank piece of paper. So I see. You must have made a quick switch. No, I didn't. Nurse Stevens was with me when I took that out of the casket. Weren't you, Eleanor? I was with Dr. Channing every second. That doesn't mean anything. You're always with him. And you wouldn't pass up a fortune either, just for one little lie. If that's the way you feel, you can search me. And if you find I've hidden anything, I'll give you all of my share. Dr. Channing, the casket's being placed in the vault. Thank you. The casket must be searched thoroughly. Since you don't trust me any longer, we'll let Mr. Matthews do it. Come on, we'll go on to the vault. You sure there are no papers in there? I'm positive, sir. There never was anything but the envelope Mr. Thorne gave me to put in. Where do we start? Well, why not ask Martin? Maybe he saw Lorinda hanging around some special part of the house. We forgot that Martin's been here but a short length of time. It's funny you'd think of that. But then maybe you did before you took that clue. Sure, then you would have known there was no one to tip us off and you'd have been certain to have the whole thing yourself. But I haven't got the clues, I tell you. I swear I haven't. How about you, nurse? Yes, do you want to swear you never saw any clue? I only want to get out of here, and I'm going to. Take me home. Sure. I'll be glad to get away from these snarling mongrels myself. Then get out and stay out. If I catch either one of you snooping around, I'll... You'll get a crack on the head. Like you did from that door the night you thought Mary was alone in her room. Have you gone 
crazy. The ghost got annihilated by a neck. Hell. She's dead. She's been choked to death. Why would anyone want to kill her? Maybe somebody thought she had the clue. It's one thing they can't accuse us of. We're all together. If I didn't have fat feet, I could get myself a nice, quiet job now. see a man in a cloak? Yes. I saw him upstairs, and I saw him down here. Oh, what you saw must have come out of a bottle. Whoever it was must have killed Miss Stevens. I'm going to phone the sheriff's office. Hello. Operator. It's dead. The storm must have put it out of commission. Well, write a message. Eustace can take it. Who, me? You heard Mr. Thorne say the phone was dead? Yes, and so was the pigeon and Miss Lorena and the little nice lady. I reckon it'll be me next if I have to go to the sheriff alone. You're going whether you like it or not. I'm going, but I won't like it. Well, I'm not going to stay up all night. The sheriff can see me in the morning. Good night. How about a night, cap, honey? Sure, what'll it be? Name your poison. Never mind, I'll fix it for myself. Okay, if you don't trust me. Come on, just a little one. Help take your mind off your worries. Well, maybe just a little one. that you're going to run upstairs and get some sleep. Well, I'm not sleeping. I'm going to stay up till the sheriff gets here. Well, I couldn't ask for better company. No, I'm kind of sleepy myself.
more important. Let me have that paper. Well, I heard a bell, but I never thought I'd get the clue delivered by special messenger. Or is this one of Walter's gags? Oh, no, it isn't. Walter hasn't even been down here. See, if Walter doesn't know about this, why tell him? Why tell anybody? We'll just split 50-50. A smart girl. Should have married you instead of Estelle. says it's been a murder. Yes, sir. Very unfortunate. Mr. Thorne can give you the details. He's in the library right this way, sir. Mr. Thorne? Excuse me, sir. I'm the sheriff. Something wrong here, Doc. Something is wrong. The man's been drugged. Get some strong coffee, boy. Butler? Come with Sleeper. Don't like dead for shares. I don't like You mean somebody slipped you a Mickey? How do you know? Who are you? Oh, excuse me, Sheriff. You say I was knocked out? Yeah. And Mary must have been, too. Where is she? We've got to find her. Just a minute. Somebody told us there'd been a killing. Now, who was killed? The nurse we had for Miss Channing. She was choked to death. That sounds like it might be the work of Miss Channing's crazy brother. We'll talk about that later. Let's find Mary first. Have I seen you someplace before? Very likely, sir. If you spent much time in London. Take a look around the grounds, boys. Keep your eyes open. You don't go away. I want to talk to you later. Yes, sir. tell you about it in the morning. Yeah, probably over the telephone after you got the stuff and made a getaway. This is the nurse's room. Nothing's been touched. Well, the body's gone. What is this, a gag? No, I saw it myself. And you, as the house boy, actually saw her killed. All right, we'll search the house. Get busy, Mullins. I want to question the house boy. All he can tell you is that it was a ghost or a cloaked figure. Yeah, the boy's absolutely off his nut. Well, so is the guy that got out of the asylum. I found her. Here she is in here. She's been murdered. Pulse seems normal. I'll say she just had a shot of the same stuff that you got. She'll be all right. Thank goodness. She's all right. Now, I'm going downstairs and I have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the rest of the folks. You take another look around for that nurse. I wish they'd stop turning out these lights. What's wrong now? There's Hattie laying on the floor, dead at the nurse. Where? Oh, who there? Hattie, how'd she get there? I she went home. I'll come through the door with the ice, and she's laying right here. But now she ain't. No, and she never was. This is the boy who said he saw ghosts. Yes, and I saw Hattie, too. Only now I don't. I'm sure you didn't, Eustace, because Hattie is gone, as I told you. 
Okay, that settles Hattie. Now, I want to ask some questions. Well, I suggest we go in the library and talk. You'll find some refreshments in there. Well, the library, then. I want to test some of those refreshments anyway. Hey, Chief, wait a minute. I didn't find no body, but I found a sword and a lot of shooting stuff. These are just old relics. Put them down. Any of you people armed? All I've got is my bassoeta. How about you? I carry this for protection, but I have a permit. In the library, please. Uh oh, there goes the light. Who put those lights out? The storm must have blown the wires down. Have we got any candles? Yes, this house is well equipped. Are we all here now? My little cook ain't, and he ain't in the kitchen neither. Mr. Thorne and Miss Winfield haven't come down either, but I'll get them. And Marlowe, too. I'll go with you. This isn't the kind of a house for anyone to be alone in. Sucks, I nearly had it then. At what, sir? Where I'd seen you before. And it wasn't London either. Just sure. Well, it might have been London at that. Only I never been there. Hurry up, read it to me. Turn the yellow knob to three. Back to nine. Now to six. <laughs> Yeah, I am in the dark again. It's Rita. Where's Walter? She's all right. She just fainted. What's this? Well, I'll explain about this later. Fix her up first. Take her in the library. Hey, Sheriff. One of these guns is gone. Maybe the lady can explain about that, too. Excuse me, Dr. Channing. I want to examine you first. Your gun is missing. My gun? Well, of course, if you think I took it. Beware, Horace. Death stands just beside you. You can hear my voice, Horace, but you cannot see the spirit of the dead. Lorinda. Yes, Lorinda. You last saw her in her casket. That should have made you very happy. Turn around, Horace. Listen to the thunder. Watch for the hidden hand. Before she can talk. That's hard to tell. I can bring her around in a hurry if you let me get my medical kit. Go ahead. That's right, Lawrence. It's your gun. Take it. Well as ever, too, <laughs> thanks to your antidote. The antidote? Yes, that's what saved you, of course. Only you didn't give it to me. Fortunately, I anticipated your actions perfectly and had Martin give it to me with your own needle. Greed made you try to murder me. I wish I had murdered you. Too bad for you, you didn't. You have nothing on me. Just enough to have you thrown out of the medical profession. I don't think you will, Lorinda. You forget you're officially dead already. So. <laughs> Even a rat will fight when cornered, eh? Well, I thought of that, too. That's why I removed all but the two cartridges I fired at Horace. 
those were blanks, but two perfect shots. You can bet your neck on that. Little shots, I'm sure. Where'd they come from? Left the room last. What's going on here? Horace! Two bullets right through the heart. My Aunt Lorinda just shot him. Yo, what? I said Lorinda Channing just shot him with his gun. It's crazy. Well, he knows Miss Lorinda's dead. Of course he knows. He signed her death certificate himself. We all know she's dead. That's just what you think. But she's hiding in those walls right now, as alive as any of us, and laughing at the way she's trapped me. Just setting the stage to cop an insanity plea, Mike. Put the cuffs on him. You can take over the body, Doc. Oh, but you're wrong, Sheriff. I'm not feigning insanity. What happened was that Lorinda Channing paid me to put her into a temporary trance. If one of you people will let me, I'll show you exactly what happened right now. You ain't gonna put me through no transom, because I ain't gonna be here. The least you can do, Sheriff, is to open her casket. You'll find she's not there, then you'll know I'm telling the truth. Well, let's not bother about that tonight. If she's not in her casket now, the chances are she won't be tomorrow. Let's just go back to town and you can get a little rest. But I don't need any rest. And I'm not insane. In fact, I'm the only one in this family who isn't. Sure, I know. That's exactly what your Uncle John said ten years ago when they first took him up there. Take him away, boys. I'll file the charges tomorrow myself. How terrible to think it was Dr. Channing all the time. I can't believe it. Well, it all fits into place. Nobody else had any reason for killing that nurse. And as far as Horace is concerned, he was probably about to find the hidden treasure, so the doctor just put him out of the way. I wonder what happened to Walter. Mallow, too. Oh, we'll get the whole story out of him sooner or later. These metal cases always open up and start bragging. Mentioning that hidden money reminds me, Sheriff. I think we've got the real clue here. We might as well try it anyhow. Oh, I wonder if we should. That money's caused so much unhappiness already. I know, but wouldn't it be better if we found the money and divided it fairly? I suppose so. Well, I'll read the directions and you carry them out. It says to go to the old wheel clock over the mantel. Turn the yellow knob to three. Back to nine. Now to six. Mary! Mary, don't touch that wheel again. But Lorinda. Yes, the late deceased. Then the doctor's not guilty. You're the killer. Oh, Aunt Lorinda, I can't believe that. I don't like the term killer, Sheriff Selby. I prefer executioner. You see, all I did was rid the world of a few abnormals. Well, that may be, ma'am, but under the law... I know, you've got your duty to perform. But that's all right. I've fulfilled my mission on this earth anyhow. Young man, take good care of Mary. Of course I will, Miss Channing, but I... Mary, you've got to forget all about this. I'm sorry to have destroyed your faith in me, but if I hadn't, you yourself would have been destroyed. Now I remember. No wonder he looked familiar. He's John Channing. Yes, I'm John Channing. But you're doing me a grave injustice. Lorinda deserves credit for only Mallow, Horace, and Walter. Patty and the nurse go on my score. They're also down there. <laughs> and do come up and see me sometime. Visiting day is Thursday and we always serve tea. Or scotch and spiders if you prefer. <laughs> the last of the Mad Channings. Well, I guess that clears everything up, so unless you people want me to stay, I'll be going. Sheriff, I wonder if you'd mind dropping us downtown. Not at all. I'll be glad to. Come along. the ghost and gone. This house is full of nothing but quiet and peace. I can get myself a little rest now. I'll wind the clock and put out the lights and I'll be through for the night. <laughs> 